Hey guys, Prangle Gaming here. Welcome to the Millwall Courier Mode. It's now episode 22. We are nearing on the end of the Millwall Courier Mode. We have five games to play before we finish the League One season. So who are we playing in today's episode? Well, the first game is actually away from home against Bradford. They are currently fifth in the league. That's going to be a challenging game, but we did beat them quite well last time we played them. Then we've got to play Shrewsbury at home. They are sixth in the league table, just a little bit lower than Bradford. But again, that game will be hard as well. And then the final game of this episode is against Doncaster at home. They are 21st in the league table, so that should be an easy game for us. And as I said in the last episode, we have renewed John Marquis's contract. So we've sorted that one out. We are actually joint with Wigan at the moment. We really need to continue winning and hope that Wigan can slip up. But before we get into today's video, tomorrow, instead of being a normal another game video, it will actually be the final Mill career mode because there's only two more games and that'll be Bury and Fleetwood. So you'll be getting to see that tomorrow and then we go from there and probably continue to do a Series 2. But enough about that, let's actually get into the game against Bradford and let me show you who we're using against Bradford. Right, so this is a team that's going to be playing Bradford away from home. In goal, we're going to have David Ford. The left back is going to be Joe Martin. Ethan Ebanks Landall and the captain Tony Craig are going to be the two centre backs for the club. The right back is going to be Carlos Edwards. The right midfielder is Paris Cohen Hall. The centre midfielders are Askunes and Upson. The left midfielder is going to be Lee Martin. And the two strikers are going to be Pavey and John Marquis. And I'm not completely delusional. I will have Lee Gregory on the bench, so hopefully he can come on and score some more goals to add to his goal-scoring tally. So, can we beat Bradford? Let's go find out. Not to Derby. To Clark. Arias. And what a move here with Anderson, but Ethan Ebanks Lander wins the ball and then tries to play it to Lee Martin, but Lee Martin will somehow lose the ball. That's a great cross. Hopefully we can header it away, and indeed we can't. Bradford actually have the lead. This is not the first time I've conceded first. It's getting really frustrating now. I cannot stop conceding. And as I keep conceding first, that puts me under more pressure to have to try and win this game. If I score first, surely it'd be cruise control. But obviously, it's not always the ideal scenario. And as Bradford are proving, it's not going to be easy today. Upson, we're going to shoot here. He's not going to challenge anyone, but can we get the ball to one of our attacking players. It's with Ethan Ebanks Landall. It's now out wide to Carlos Askins. Oh, and he scored. How about that for a goal? Carlos Askins again with the crucial goals. And that was a fantastic strike there. I cannot believe that went in. Ethan Ebanks Landall tried it, and then Askins did try it, and it actually went in the back of the net. That was a glorious goal for the centre defensive midfielder. Obviously, he is here to replace Williams, but at the moment, he's scoring more and more goals and proving that he could be a direct replacement instead of just being able to defend. Bradford will kick off proceedings for the second half. It is one all at the moment. Both sides are actually looking for a winner. So this is going to be a crucial half to this match. Edwards to Carlos Azcunes. Azcunes is going to play the ball up the pitch for Alfie Pavey. Pavey is going to continue going with the ball. Alfie Pavey, what a run he's on here. If we can get in behind, this could be a great chance. Pavey, still going. Alfie Pavey with the shot. And what a save by the Bradford goalkeeper there. Right, we're going to be making two substitutions here. Carlos Azcunes is coming off and so is Alfie Pavey for Lee Gregory and Jack Powell. Lee Gregory's got to come on and score us the winner here because this would be so crucial for our season. And of course, as we need goals, he is here to play. Gregory to Joe Martin. Joe Martin, he lays it on for Jack Powell. Powell still going with the ball. It's Jack Powell with a strike. And what a save by the Bradford goalkeeper Jones there. Upson, he's going to cross the ball in here. Can we get the header? Yes, we can. And we've actually managed to put the ball in the back of the net. By the look of it, it is John Marquis with the goal. He's rewarding us with a goal that could be so crucial for our season. Thanks to us giving him a contract extension. How about that for a corner? I don't score him very often and that was a bit of luck because I wasn't even controlling him but he actually managed to put the ball behind the goalkeeper as the goalkeeper was already out of his net
I tell you what, John Marquis is definitely paying back his money that he's getting on his contract. We just about managed to be a little bit better than Bradford in that game. And his goal is the crucial goal that actually makes us win the game. And I am so grateful, thanks to John Marquis, for scoring that goal. And hopefully that'll mean that Wigan will slip up and we go top of the league eventually. It's got to happen, surely. We can't stay level with Wigan for the last few games of the season. We've only got four left. So, let's get into the next game and hopefully we can get just as good as a result. Right, before we play Shrewsbury, I actually asked before the game for 500000 in transfer funds. I almost got that full money there. Now, before I went on my spree where I got everyone to accept the contracts, I did actually offer Jack Powell a contract and obviously I couldn't afford all the money to pay him at the time. So he hasn't signed the contract, but I will probably go on and sign him once he's ready to renegotiate with me. Then got Keaton Wood, Steve Morrison, Lee Martin and Marlon Romeo who accepted the contract offers. They will stay at Millwall for at least one more season. Ed Upson then had the audacity to decline a contract which was 10,000 a week when he's on 6,000 a week. But actually, he wanted 20,000 a week. He's not even that valuable to the team. That's the money that Carlos Askins is on. And Carlos Askins can actually do a decent job in the team. So Upson can leave the club. I'm not even going to bother offering a new contract. We then got Chris Powell who accepted it. We then got Aidan O'Brien who declined it because at the time I couldn't afford his money. But I can now, so I'll probably go in and offer him a new one. But his contract ends not at the end of this season, but the end of next season. But I wanted to keep him on longer because I don't want the same issue with season two and what I did with season one. And of course, the best player in the team, Lee Gregory. His contract isn't ending at the end of the season, but it's ending the season after, the end of season two, that his contract would have actually run out. But we don't want that. We want to keep our best players at the club, and indeed we have with that. Right, so let's go play Shrewsbury. Hopefully we can get a decent result. Sid Nelson will be in the team as he was complaining that he wants more game time. Right, and after beating Bradford, we now have to play Shrewsbury, who are a position below them. So in goal, we're going to have to play Christian Walton. I just don't like the fact that Ford's conceding so many goals recently. Hancocks is going to be the left back. The centre backs are then Nelson and the captain, Tony Craig. Now the right back is going to be Romeo. He has just signed a new contract with the club. The right midfielder is Paris Kernel. The centre midfielders are Askunes and Williams. Two players that are like for like at the moment. Ferguson is the left midfielder. He's finally back in the team after a little absence. The strikers are then going to be Pavey and Morrison. Pavey will actually remain in the team as I want to get him as much first team experience as I can. And Gregory scored enough goals to probably win the golden boot already. So Gregory can just come off the bench whenever he needs to. Williams couldn't actually carry out with the ball though. This is a great chance for Collins. Collins with a strike. How did he miss it from there? I do not know. Williams, he's going to cross the ball in here. Can we get the header with Morrison? Yes, we can. And we've scored straight away. I thought that's what was actually going to happen here when we won the free kick. It's a very easy chance for our aerial threat, Steve Morrison, to score. And in fact, he did very easily there. I'm quite happy to have renewed his contract if he's going to do that for us. Oh, this is a great chance here with Collins. He's still going with it. And Walton with a save that's probably just kept us in the lead. As Kunes. And we still are struggling to win headers. Collins. And that's a great pass to Black. Black's going. Oh, he plays it across. And they miss a sweaty goal. He hits the crossbar. How about that? That's why you don't cheat in games. Right, we're going to make two substitutions here. We're going to be bringing on Lee Gregory and Gary Gardner for Carlos Askins and Steve Morrison. Morrison will be very, very tired. So we need to bring on someone with fresher legs. And of course, I'm very grateful that Morrison did score that goal that's put us in the lead at the moment. Knight Percival, that is a great cross up the pitch. Can we header it away? Yes, we can. It's now with Alfie Pavey. Pavey to Lee Gregory. Gonna get past the Knight Percival and then look Knight. He's still going with it, however, Gregory is. He can still move with the ball. What can he do here? He's still going. He's going to twist past one defender. He's still going. Gregory with the shot, and there you go. That should win us the game. Lee Gregory adds to his goal scoring tally in League One. He is just such 
a trooper. He continued running. He kept moving with the ball. And he put that in the back of the net. He made it his mission to score. But it's now 2-0. Surely that means we've won this game. And to be honest, I'm not going to complain. Shrewsbury played a lot better than us. And we were very, very lucky to come out with the result we did. We had four shots and four on target. And funnily enough, that was all in the second half. The first half, we had no shots whatsoever. So Shrewsbury were very unlucky not to have won the game. Because I do think they dominated us a lot more. We just got lucky with the manner we scored our goals. Anyway, we've beaten Shrewsbury. We've actually gained promotion now. So we've only got to play Doncaster in this episode. And hopefully that should secure at least a lead above Wigan for the league title. Right, and this is the team that's going to be playing Doncaster. This is the final team of the episode. We are in fact above Wigan at the moment because Wigan slipped up and drew. So in goal, we got Jordan Archer. I just think because we're playing a team in relegation, we might as well put out a very weakened side. The left back is Mitch Hancocks. We then got the two centre backs as Nelson and the captain, Tony Craig who probably won't be the captain next season. I'm going to have a look at a few players' form and see who best deserves to be the captain. The right back is going to be Cummins. The right midfielder is going to be Fred. The centre midfielders are going to be Powell and Thompson. The left midfielder is now Aidan O'Brien. And the two strikers will remain as Pavey and Morrison. They didn't score between them very well in the last game, but I want to hope that that relationship of older striker and younger striker will blossom to do really well because we need Pavey to gain experience and if anyone's going to teach him it's obviously going to be Morrison so let's see if we can beat Doncaster Keegan is still going to Rios Rios with the strike and that almost went in the back of the net Doncaster already causing upsets for us Keegan to Rios Rios he's going to play it through to Williams who looks like he's just beat an archer and he has its 1-0 to Doncaster. Again, I have conceded before I actually score. I'm getting frustrated with this. I did that against Bradford. And I've done that against a lot of teams recently. I would prefer if this didn't happen. But again, if I'm going to put out a smaller side, a weakened team, then I expect to concede really. But it's just frustrating, the fact that I concede first. And I can't score my goal before I let one in. Taylor Sinclair is going to cross the ball in here. Can Hancocks get the header away? No, he can't. And they've got the header. And Archer just about saves it. I don't know how he saved it, to be honest. That's quite weird. Let's have a look at this again. He saved it with his hand. And then his foot came up by the look of it to then boot it away for the corner. Right, we have to kick off for the second half after a dreadful first half. Powell is going to give it to Fred. Fred is going to give it to his buddy Cummins. Cummins. That's a great pass to Alfie Pavey. Can Pavey get in behind? He actually can here. Alfie Pavey. Oh, he looks like he's been brought down in the area and we've won a penalty. We can get back in this game. Hopefully we can score the penalty because I've been done to this quite a lot recently. Right, after Morrison missed it last time, we're going to let Alfie Pavey take it and there we go. Alfie Pavey scores the equaliser. He gets a goal to his tally in terms of his professional record. And while I couldn't be more happy to have scored that goal, actually, it's such a relief because I don't want teams like Doncaster walking all over me and Stuckerman didn't really move for that, did he? Let's be honest. Right, we're going to be making three subs here. Lee Martin, Carlos Askins and Lee Gregory coming on for Alfie Pavey, Aidan O'Brien and Jack Powell. Hopefully, these three attacking players can get us the goal we need. Hancocks to Lee Martin. Lee Martin to Askins. Askins is now with Hancocks. Hancocks is still going with it. Hancocks is going to play it across. Oh, we've managed to put the ball in the back of the net. It's Steve Morrison with the goal. How about him scoring another goal? Adding to his very little goal tally in this league. Hancocks played the pass. It's just a simple tap in there. I think he slipped, to be honest. I don't even think he meant to score. But how about that? We're taking the lead against Doncaster. Maybe I will be a bit concerned that it takes this long to actually score that goal. But we're winning at the moment. That's all that matters. Main. Cummins will win the ball back here. They then play it to Thompson. He's going to play it up the pitch for Lee Gregory to run onto it. 
And Gregory's still going with it now. What can Gregory do? He's got him behind. It's Lee Gregory with the shot and Lee Gregory with the goal. How about that? It's the daily routine for Lee Gregory to score at the moment. I'll be concerned and think something's up if he didn't because he makes scoring a very easy place to be at the moment. Well, this was a game where we took our chances, but we did have very few chances. Again, the weaker side pretty much dominating a lot of the possession and the play of the ball. But we took the result we needed to. As I said, Morrison scored a goal where I don't even think he meant to score it. Let's be honest there. But Gregory did what he does best and put the ball in the back of the net and made it a routine win for us at the moment. Surely no one's stopping us from winning the title now. Now, before we end this episode, I just want to see where we are in the league table. It doesn't really matter where Gregory is in the goal-scoring ranks, because I have no doubt he's top at the moment, and no one's going to challenge him. We just want to see how Wigan have fared against us at the moment. Oh, would you look at that? Wigan actually did lose their game against Barnsley, and that means that we're five points above Wigan. Surely we've won the title now. They've conceded the same amount as us, but we've scored far more than them. And well, I've got to say, we've done pretty well to keep our loss record down at the moment. But as soon as we get into the championship, I know it's going to be a lot harder. If we don't turn them into draws, then it's going to be a hell of a lot of losses for the team. But no, we're doing really well. We've got two more games. We've got Bury and Fleetwood. And that'll be tomorrow, actually, because I want to end the series this week. And then next week, start going into the new season and hopefully it'll be just as good and just as interesting. We can have a very good time in the championship, but who knows what'll happen. So anyway, guys, I hope you have enjoyed this Millwall career mode. It's been really, really frustrating for me at times, conceding the goals against the teams early on isn't the best, but I did go on to win those games eventually, like I have done for quite a while now. I've got such a good win streak, but that's obviously while I'm top of the league above Wigan. So, like, comment, subscribe, and of course, stay tuned for more Mill Career Mode episodes. And of course, don't forget to watch the final episode of Season 1 tomorrow. Goodbye.